Welcome back to the History Fix. Last time I talked about that second great transformation in human social experience, the emergence of classes um, on the basis of the surpluses which were being created by the agricultural revolution. And I suggested that a large part of that process was bound up with conflict between different communities for control of surplus which gave rise to a need for rulers and generals and people who were going to organize military defense. So the implication sort of is that it's, it's bound up as well with the emergence of the state, the emergence of uh, warfare. Um, and I talked about how once you have an elite that's in control, it can sustain its position and you get a, a system of exploitation developing. And I said as well, as part of this, almost like a package of major changes that are happening to human society, um, the oppression of women uh, is part and parcel of it. Uh, so the emergence of patriarchy, um, I think very much at the same time as you get the emergence of social classes. Now, sometimes people think that, a little bit like people imagine there have always been classes. There haven't always been classes. People sometimes imagine there's always been patriarchy. There's always been male oppression of women. Well, there hasn't. Or at least that's what the archaeological and the anthropological evidence very strongly suggests, that there's a huge amount of evidence that points to uh, a situation in, certainly in hunting and gathering communities, and even in early agricultural communities, where there was a very high measure of equality between men and women. Indeed, more than that, people talk about it being a more matriarchal society than a patriarchal one. And that's because there's a lot of evidence that people, generally speaking, would live in the village um, of the mother. In other words, that, that when uh, a man uh, married uh, a woman, uh, the man would then move to the village of uh, the woman to live. That's, that's a matrilocal uh, kinship system. A lot of evidence for matrilineal lines of descent, which means that instead of tracing your descent from the father, you trace your descent from uh, the mother. Um, so a kind of matriarchy, and certainly women having as much of a say in the major decisions being made by the community as men. Now we know that that doesn't last terribly long. We know that patriarchy um, emerges, that we, we, we move to a situation where uh, men become very dominant in society and it's still uh, to, to a large degree the case today. Now why is that and how does this change take place? Well I think it's bound up with different ways of producing uh, wealth. If you're uh, in a community which is hunting and gathering if you're in a community which is engaging in relatively simple agricultural labor, like hoe-based cultivation, that's actually something that women can do relatively easily, uh, even when they are pregnant and even when they are suckling children, even when they're um, managing uh, young children. And of course, it is the case that in prehistoric society, women had to spend a huge amount of time either um, bearing children or rearing children and suckling children and that was bound up with the fact that life expectancy was relatively short and so women, adult women, did spend a large part of their lives um, having children but they could still contribute to collective labour. That begins to change as the technology of production begins to become more sophisticated. There are two critical things, I think. And one is the development of pastoralism, the herding of animals um, over relatively large uh, distances, and the other is the development of plough-based agriculture, where instead of just cultivating a small field right next to the village using simple hand tools, you're beginning to cultivate larger fields, probably a bit further away from the village, and you're using a piece of relatively heavy 
equipment. Ploughing is a much more heavy duty, uh, much more labour intensive process uh, than hoe cultivation. As that shift begins to take place, increasingly men are in control of the productive process. It's the men who tend to do the ploughing. It's the men who tend to do um, the, the herding of cattle and sheep and the movement of herds and flocks over long distances um, and so on. And men begin to acquire, as a result of that, increasing control as the technology becomes more sophisticated, the technology of agriculture becomes more sophisticated. Men have increasing control over the surpluses that are being generated. And then we have a growing interest on the part of men in the way that surplus is going to be managed, the way it's going to be used, and in particular the way it's going to be passed on from one generation to another. In matriarchal society, property was to a very large extent controlled collectively by the village, and in a matriarchal system where it's matrilocal residents, people live uh, in the village of their, of their wife or their mother, where it's a matrilineal system where you're tracing descent through the line of the mother. So the brothers of the mother have a huge say in how property is being used, how surpluses are being used. That's one way of dealing with the surplus that's being created. A different way of dealing with the surplus becomes increasingly important as men, through their control of herds, through their control of ploughing, through their increasingly central role in a more sophisticated kind of agriculture involving heavier forms of labour, men have an interest in beginning to challenge that matriarchal basis for the control of property. They want to have control of the property uh, themselves. They want to ensure, in particular, that the property that they accumulate, the surplus that they accumulate through their, through their work, is passed on to their own uh, offspring. Not something that goes into the hands of their wife's brothers, but something that they can pass on to their son. You have the development of uh, surpluses. You have the development of um, unequal distribution of surpluses. You have a development of private property, private property in the hands of men. And you have a growing preoccupation among men with ensuring control of that property inside uh, their own family. And two different ways of organizing society, bound up with two different ways of managing property, managing surpluses, are in conflict with each other. A system which is essentially communal, based on matriarchy, based on the, the wife's village, the mother's uh, village, and the kind of collective approach to property, and a different kind of approach which is based upon the man's control over surpluses, private uh, property, a family which is now going to be defined in terms of um, patriarchy, of patrilineal descent, and patrilocal uh, control um, over society's uh, resources. Now, as soon as you get that situation emerging and the old matriarchal kinship system beginning to break down and a new system based on patriarchy and private property and the accumulation of wealth in particular families dominated by men, as soon as you get that happening, control over the sexuality of women becomes a critical question for men. Men need to be certain of the paternity of their offspring because their offspring are going to inherit the property. And you get all kinds of restrictions now being imposed upon the sexuality um, of women. Women are subordinated to men, not just economically, but they also become a sexual property of men in a patriarchal uh, setup. Patriarchy emerges at the same time as class society, at the same time as private property, as we move into a different world characterized by exploitation and oppression. 
we'll be exploring the full implications of that next time. We are facing the greatest crisis in the history of humanity. Capitalism is driving us towards climate catastrophe. To understand how we got here and how we get out of it, we really need to understand human history. What we're trying to do here at The History Fix is to give us the understanding of the past that we need to equip us to fight for a better future. If you like what we're doing, please share and subscribe and also contribute to our Patreon page. Thanks very much. <laughs>